Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the October 2016 International A-Level at Excel Mechanics M1 exam. Uh, this question is about vectors. It tells us in this question that I and J are horizontal unit vectors due east and due north respectively. And position vectors are given relative to a fixed origin O as it does in all these vector type questions. It says a particle P is moving with velocity I minus 2J kilometers per hour. At time equals zero hours, the position vector of P is minus 5i plus 9j kilometers. At time t hours, the position vector of P is p kilometers. Um, find an expression for P in terms of t. So we know that the position vector of a object going at a certain velocity, constant velocity, is given by its initial position, that's when time was zero, plus its velocity times time. That's the general formula to find the position vector of any particle at time t that's going at a constant velocity. So here our r is equal to p, that's the position vector. Our r0 is the position vector at time equals 0. It tells you at time equals 0 this is the position vector. I'll write that as a column vector for now. 5, negative 5i plus 9j, so minus 5 and 9, that's the vector. That's where it is in relation to the origin when time was 0. And the velocity vector describes in which direction and magnitude it's moving. How it's moving is i minus 2j, which is 1 minus 2. Okay, 1i minus 2j. Okay, so now all we have to do is fill in these details here. So we got p equals r0, which is minus 5, 9, plus v times t. So it's time times this velocity vector 1 minus 2. Now, you can leave your, your answer like this. That's perfectly fine. You could also have your answer written in this form where you can write minus 5 plus t as like your whole i component. Just write it in one go. And 9 minus 2t. You can write it like that. That's i, that's a j component. That's fine. You can also write it as um, a vector in terms of i and j. i and j, sorry. You can put minus 5i plus 9j plus t times i minus 2, 1 minus, that's i minus 2j, sorry, 1i minus 2j. Or you could even write it in this form as minus 5 plus ti plus 9 minus 2tj. Okay, all of those are perfectly acceptable ways of writing your answer. Now, because they gave us the question in terms of... Um, i's and j's then it's probably better to write it in either this way so you could put here in kilometers at the end and here and then kilometers at the end you can write it in either of these two ways would probably be better okay but all of these ways are perfectly fine okay that doesn't want to be separated okay so all of these ways are perfectly fine all these four ways but these two let me just separate this because it looks a bit messy here i'll just rewrite that part That's kilometers, as I said, it could also be written as P equals minus 5 plus Ti. Minus 5 plus Ti plus 9 minus 2Tj and all of that kilometers. So all of those are perfectly fine ways of writing the answer. Okay, now, then it says a point A has position vector 3i plus 2j. Find the position vector of P when P is due west of A. So we know P is, I'm going to write it in this form here because I think that's easy to do with, minus 5 plus T and 9 minus 2T. That's the position vector of, the, of P. Okay, And the position vector of O means from O to A is 3, 2. Now when P is due west of A, Okay, when it's due west, so we have north, east, south, west. Due west is this side. When it's due west of A, okay, then what do we know about it? Let's have a, let's have a little diagram just to show you, illustrate this. If this is the origin and O to A is 3, 2, 3, 2, that's where A is. Now, what we know is if P is due west of A, it's basically in line with A, okay, in this 
sense. It's due west of A. It's, it's in line with A in relation to the origin. It's the same distance from the origin vertically as A. That means the J components will be the same. So, for example, supposing P was here, okay, then you can see that the position vector of A would be, you know, something I plus 2J. This will be 2J. And here you're going to have something i plus 2j so the j components are the same so when when p is due west of a or even if even if it said due east it would be the same same concept p is due west of a the the j components will be the same okay that means the vector p and o to a will have the same j component okay if it said due east the same thing if it said due north or due south then the i components would be the same so when it says something is due west of something else the i the j components are the same if it says due east again the j components will be the same if it says due north or due south that's where the i components will be the same because you have to go the same distance horizontally to get to that same level okay so now if the j components are the same then i can say that the j component of this vector and the j component of that vector must be equal. So I can say 9 minus 2t is equal to 2. So you're going to have 7 equals 2 times t. So we can say t is 7 over 2 okay, hours. Okay, so at 7 over 2 hours, they will have the same, um, they'll be due, it will be due west. So we want to find the position vector of p at this time. So we can say that when t equals 7 over 2 hours, then we can say p is equal to minus 5 plus 7 over 2 and 9 minus 2 times 7 over 2. So that's minus 5, that's like minus 10 over 2 plus 7 over 2, which is going to be uh, minus 3 over 2. Okay, and this is 9 minus 7, which is 2. So you have minus 1.5, you could say, and 2. That's the position vector of P. Okay, so P is going to be minus 1.5i plus 2j. Okay, let's just make sure that's right. Minus 5 plus 3.5 is going to be minus 1.5. That's correct. So that's the answer to part B of this question. Okay, and now we're going to go on to part C. Okay, part C says another particle Q is moving with the velocity 2b minus i plus 5 minus 2b. So we can say that the velocity of Q is given by the vector. Let me write it in this form. I prefer it like this. 2b minus 1 um, and 5 minus 2b. That's the i, that's the j component of the velocity. It says given that um, the particles are moving along parallel lines, find the value of b. So they're basically telling us that the velocity of P and Q are parallel to each other. And the velocity of P was um, I minus 2J. So the velocity of P is I minus 2J, 1 minus 2. So these two are basically parallel. Okay, Two vectors are parallel when they have the same uh, direction. So they are, when, they, when you have vectors which are parallel, you can express one as a multiple of the other. So I can say the velocity of Q is equal to some constant times the velocity of P. Okay, if, if the velocity of Q is parallel to the velocity of P, then they be, can be expressed as multiples of each other. So therefore I can say that 2B minus 1 and 5 minus 2B, that vector is equal to some constant number times 1 minus 2. From that, I can set up a pair of equations. I can say that 2b minus 1 equals k, and 5 minus 2b equals negative 2. Um, negative 2k, sorry. All right, so I've set up these two equations. If I take the first equation here and I multiply the whole of it by 2 to make the k's the same, because I want to uh, find what b is, I don't, I don't need to find the k, I want to put the k there. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by Two. So I'm going to end up with um, 4b. I'll write that over here, 4b. And 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. So I've just rewritten this so they're in line with each other. That's all. So 2 times uh, minus 1 is minus 2. 2 times 2b is 4b. And 2 times k is 
2k. So now if I take these two equations and I add them, this gives you 0, which I want to eliminate the case. This gives me 2b, and this gives me 5 minus 2, which is 3. So therefore I can say that 2b equals negative 3. So therefore b is equal to negative 3 over 2. So there's the answer for this question. So when vectors are parallel, they are multiples of each other. They can be expressed as multiples of each other. And that's what we, we use to do this. Um, a lot of students, when they do this question, they just basically multiply, do kind of cross multiplication. This times this equals that times that. And th that's perfectly fine. That's also another method of doing it. I prefer to do it or to show the steps in this way because it shows an understanding of what's going on rather than just memorizing a method. Okay, so we understand that when vectors are parallel, that you can express one as a as a as a um, constant times the other, as a multiple of the other, and then from there how you solve it's fine. I, I just set up a pair of simultaneous equations. You can, as this is a constant, you can just multiply across this times that equals that times that, and you'll get the correct answer in the end anyway. Okay, so there we have the answer to this question. Um, that completes the whole of the question number three from this October 2016 paper. Now, you'll find in the description of this video links to my ind index of topics for IGCSE and for AS and A-level for other units. Um, you might find those useful. You might find those useful to share with your friends as well and you, you know your fellow students as well. Um, thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper will be found in this playlist that should appear at this area at the end of the video other questions about vectors from m1 in this playlist and here if you wish to subscribe you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon